So what is community property uh, and separate property? Okay, uh, so this generally revo uh, involves the situation where a married couple, okay, is uh, separating and you need to determine what property belongs to who, okay, uh, who has ownership rights in there and who's required to uh, sign documents of title or who has the ability to transfer or sell that property, okay. So to start with, let's ca classify property in this way. It can either be marital property uh, of the married couple jointly, or it can be separate property. That is, it's the properties owned individually by each spouse. Okay, and uh, whether it's marital property or uh, uh, separate property like that, generally deter is determined by the law of the jurisdiction or how the property is acquired. Okay, so let's start with the two types of jurisdictions and the way they recognize this. So you have community property jurisdictions, which are entire states, right? Uh, and then you have common law states that uh, do not recognize the, the community property rule. So let's start with a community property state. Uh, generally, these states see uh, any assets acquired after marriage, during the, during the pendency of the marriage, after the time that the couple is wed, uh, any assets acquired by the couple, that is money coming in through salary, uh, any uh, earnings, gains, anything purchased uh, um, collectively during that time uh, belongs equally to uh, the, the parties. Okay? It does not matter whose name is on the title, right? that one party's name is on the title to the real estate or to the vehicle or anything like that, or, or whose name is on the bank account. It's community property. In order to sell or transfer any of that property, generally it requires the consent of both parties. Okay? Now, any property acquired by gift during the marriage or brought into the marriage uh, beforehand or inherited by a single party during the marriage, uh, that's going to be uh, separate property. It's not going to be marital property. So these are the general rules for the community property state. Default rule is it's all marital property unless there's a reason for it to be separate. That is inheritance, gift, or they brought it into this, it, it, the uh, estate prior to marriage. All right. So then you have the common law states. And generally, <coughs> common law states view property as belonging to the individual who has title of it. Okay, so um, whoever's name is on the property, it's theirs, and that individual can sell or transfer the property uh, at will. Okay, so if one party earns all the money, has all the money in the bank account, if both names are on the bank account, 50-50. If one name is on the bank account, that party controls. Now, uh, this seems largely unfair if one spouse uh, stays home, the other spouse works, uh, puts their name on property because uh, they have a higher credit so score or something like that, uh, then it, it, in the event of divorce, that spouse would have a windfall, right? They would uh, have ownership of all the property. But uh, basically, the court uses equitable principles uh, in that way to determine if the parties need to uh, split. Has the party uh, um, contributed materially to uh, gaining that property and uh, the court will attribute some valuable to, value to that and use principles of fairness to divide the property equally uh, based on factors like how long the marriage was, what was the level of contribution uh, of each party, what is the ability of uh, each party to continue on with their life or to maintain a current uh, lifestyle to which they become accustomed. So anyway, uh, they'll look at everything again in the common law jurisdiction they look at everything as the default rule is separate property. Uh, not marital property unless, like I say, for these other equitable factors make the court deem it to be marital uh, property and then the court will uh, distribute that as it sees fit.